your show for those of us who were born a few years ago. Let's show those millennials all the things we know. Being old makes us wise. Sometimes we even go outside. We know about life before 1999. You haven't seen nothing yet if you haven't lived life pre-internet. Listen up, this is stuff you won't want to forget. Midlife Pop Culture Show. Hello, this is Mr. G for episode three of the Midlife Pop Culture Show. Today's show revolves around having fun, not too stressful, but the word mindfulness. Mindfulness means being aware of your thoughts and your responsibilities. Um, so things happen in life, uh, good things, sometimes bad things, sometimes very sad things. Um, but I don't know if that's what life is about, being happy, being sad. Not quite sure of that, but I think by being mindful and understanding that you're having these thoughts and things happen just might get us through some uh, difficult times and happy times. So with that said, let's pick up the pace a little bit. And I found something on the internet that's kind of mindful. It's called Eye of the Galaxy, which shows a camera going, oh, I think the video explains it all. This is Mr. G, we're gonna show uh, Eye of the Galaxy off of uh, YouTube. And I really think it hits home of the feel of um, where we fit in the universe. Kirsten, if you don't mind, could you play uh, Eye of the Galaxy for, for everyone?
Wow. Show us about mindfulness today, and that really gives a good scope of that we're just a small little dot on this big expanding universe. Man, makes you think, right? All right. Let's make every second of the day useful. Be mindful. Now we're going to have some fun. When we come right back, we're going to have fidget spinner races, ladies and gentlemen. First ever fidget spinner racers. We'll be right back in just about five seconds. It's a midlife pop culture show for those of us who were born a few years ago. Let's show those millennials all the things we know. Being old. Midlife pop culture show. I'm Mr. G. We're going to do sports. No, we're going to do, uh, yeah, we're going to do sports. I've been really looking forward to showing you guys this. Um, I don't know if you guys know what a fidget spinner is, but it's a small little toy. Eventually, uh, I believe, invented to help people uh, with attention deficit. It's a fun little thing to play around with. So I figured I'd have even more fun with it. And I took four of them, and here we are, the semifinals of the 2018 Fidget Spinner Championship. Kirsten, if you would, please. There at the post. The flag is up. And they are off the 2018 Fidget Spinner Championship semifinals is on its way, ladies and gentlemen. We have today Michelangelo Blue Spinner, Happy Face Yellow Spinner, Tie Dye Spinner, and the crowd favorite Ninja Spinner. Today's race is being brought to you by the good people at Fred's Ball Bearings. Yes, Fred's Ball Bearings for all your fidget spinner needs. Right now we're at the halfway point and Tie Dye Spinner is not looking very good right now. Ninja Spinner looking fantastic. Happy Face Spinner, surprising looking very good. And the crowd favorite, the youngsters, they really like that Michelangelo Blue Spinner right now. We're down to the three quarter pole. Oh no, it seems that Tie Dye Spinner is losing its momentum. Whereas Michelangelo Spinner now, keeping a calm, firm, 360 degree, three dimensional type look. He really looks even for this match. I talked to his crew chief earlier, and they were very happy with the glass table today and the way it was leveling out at practice lap. But right now, we are coming down to the three-quarter pole. Tie-dye spinner losing its momentum, followed in the back by Happy Face Spinner, then Ninja Spinner. And right now, still with an incredible, incredible swirl is... Michelangelo Spinner, and down the swirl they come. Tie-dye Spinner looks just about out of it. Happy Time Spinner not looking very well. Ninja, the favorite, losing. Looks like she's in third place. And Michelangelo Spinner looking good. As they make it down, I see Tie-dye is out. And then it looks like Happy Face Spinner is out. And now it's neck and neck. That Ninja Spinner, it's known for hanging on for a long, long time with very low velocity and looking like it's doing the same thing right now. But all eyes are on Michelangelo Spinner as it makes it down to the three-quarter pole. It's swirling excitement at its best on Midlife Pop Coach's first ever Fidget Spinner Championship. And it looks like it's going to be... Oh my goodness gracious, the Fidget Spinner is Michelangelo has won by looks like 10 to almost 15 seconds. This is one out of breath. Mr. G here at the 2018 Fidget Spinner semifinals. We'll be back with the finals right after this. Wow. Was that excitement? Was that mindful? Pretty good. Pretty good. Had fun with that. We're going to have the finals in just a few minutes. First, moving on with sports. I'm wearing a Red Sox shirt today. Wow, 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 wow. Man, oh, me. Are they doing good? They are doing fantastic. Um, I bought, got high definition. And let me tell you, it's changed my life. I can't get off the couch. It's, 
I don't think we should be charged for $10 for high definition. But wow, it does make a big difference in baseball. And uh, speaking of baseball, the 30-second pitch rule, I'm really looking forward to when they do start that. And that rule is basically saying the pitcher has to throw the ball to the catcher within 30 seconds, or the man, I believe, gets a base on balls. Um, I, when I last time I went to Fenway, they were had it on the they had it out in the back uh, on the on the Green Monster with one of the uh, on one of the scoreboards, and it was really interesting. Most pitchers are pretty close to uh, 30 seconds, but some of them do go over. You know, 45 seconds, a minute in between pitchers, got to speed the game up. I'm a big fan of it. I hope they implement that soon. Uh, another word, another sports. Um, Let's do a segment, quick segment called Sports that I kind of knew that I would never try. I talked last week about disc golf. I did go out and try disc golf. I shouldn't have gone out and tried disc golf. Uh, very disappointing. Very hard. If you're good at Frisbee, naturally, it's, this is a sport for you. I think it's definitely a sport for people who don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of dollars on golf clubs. A lot of fun. Uh, old man Mr. G didn't have that much fun. And another sport that I saw that I definitely don't want to do that looks interesting is zip lining. Now, I'm not going to put uh, straps around my uh, legs, around my back, and then jump off a tree uh, three, for a thousand feet ride down Happy Time Lane. Uh, I just can't see me doing that. Looks a lot of fun, but that's midlife pop culture for you. Not going to try it. Not going to try it. But looks really, really fun. Uh, Red Sox are doing good. Uh, and finally, uh, wrapping up sports, I have the top three TV shows to nap to. Okay, these are the shows that you want to take a nap. This is what I recommend. And number three, a show I just can't keep my eyes off of Ancient Aliens. Ancient Aliens on the History Channel. And this show basically kind of looks at the world that everything was supposedly or if you're an astronaut theorist or if you believe in it everything is ufo related from uh how we how the earth was created to society to electronics everything happened because ufos either left the technology or visited us uh, about halfway through it i'm usually snoring to the wind but it's a nice uh, nice show to kind of fall asleep to and number two one of my personal favorites american pickers now american pickers is a show about two guys that uh, go around the country and they buy antiques from at people's houses that are also collectors or sometimes just people that have a lot of stuff that want to get rid of. Really, really, uh, I call it a little, little Debbie's TV. It's just nice and calm, easy to watch, pretty interesting. Um, just a great show uh, to fall asleep to. And sometimes you you might even learn something about antiques or about the about people in general. It's a real nice show. And, of course, the all-time favorite show to fall asleep to, golf. People say it all the time. Golf, golf, golf. Man, you, by the third swing, I'm done. One, two, three. I don't care if it is high definition. We're going to be back. Talk about my experience shoe shopping right after this. show for those of us who were born a few years ago let's show those millennials all the things we know Being all, all right i want to thank kirsten for doing a great job behind the scenes and at the board went shoe shopping the other day oh my gosh horrible experience i narrowed it down to a plaza here in the lovely city of manchester new hampshire where we're recording this uh and it had two different uh video it had two different stores off uh off broadway shoes and pay less and can we get the first picture up please okay this is off broadway shoes and look at that you walk in to an escalator taking you up to the heavenly experience of shoe shopping now this for the for old people that have lived no not old people uh millennials who've lived here in the uh, 80s and 90s and 70s i believe this store used to be um service merchandise sort of like a um, costco of the day 
uh, I believe it was, uh, and that escalator was there. I think that went up to the stock room, actually. But, boy, you walk in there and, you know, you get a little ride up the escalator. Um, I was looking forward to it. It was nice and cool in there. And up I went. To the next slide, please. Um, okay, $84. Right. Never going to happen in my world. 50% off if you buy it with that one in your second shoe. Next slide, please. Didn't get those. $84 for shoes. That will, I, mean, I wish someday I would be able to go 84. Oh, 70% off plus BOGO. Buy one, get one. And this is my favorite place to shop. This is the clearance section. I did a beeline right for the, uh, right for the clearance section. I knew where it was. I've shopped there before. I have not ever bought shoes there before. And I ended up not getting shoes there again. The uh, limited supply. And can we have the next, uh, Next slide, please, Kirsten. Okay. Now, Mr. G has a size 14 wide shoe. Uh, I'm kind of proud of that. Uh, they say I can water ski without shoes. Uh, I've never tried that. I didn't want to. I grabbed the, uh, grabbed the picture off there, the 14, 15, off the back wall. My friend that was with me could not believe that I grabbed it off the wall. But what the heck? This is the Midlife Pop Culture Show. You got to do it for you. Okay? But no, no 14 wides. Uh, no good. Okay, can I have the next uh, slide, please? Boo! Boo! The best part of going to Off-Broadway Shoes was the escalator ride up. In the escalator ride down. Next one, please. And now it's off to pay less. Pay less. And I'm saying to myself, okay, I'm going to pay less. Next one, please. These were 14 wides. But to the next slide, please. Come on, $34.99. If I wanted, that would be like half price at uh, Off-Broadway. But uh, no, not going to spend $34.99. Not today. I'm like, come on, give a millennial a break. Next slide, please. Success. I found a 14 wide. This was $24.99. Kind of like the shoes I had before. I'm very happy with them. I know they're not, they're not Nike, they're not Adidas, they're not Puma, they're not Skechers. I don't even know what brand they are. Uh, I'm looking at my feet right now. I don't know. But uh, they're breathable. They're going to get me a couple months into the summer, and they were $24.95. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, okay. Well, we'll jump right into this. This was, uh, going back to entertainment, this is John Goodman. John Goodman I uh, was in the category of this show saying uh, movies that I didn't fall asleep to. Just like TV shows, movies I didn't fall asleep to. And this movie that I just saw him in was called uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Man, is John Goodman's a good actor. From Roseanne to uh, I've seen him in many, many movies. I happened to stumble across this one on Netflix and it's about a guy who builds an underground shelter um, for a Holocaust that he thought was coming, uh, kidnapped, and uh, wow, just amazing. Uh, kid, it really wasn't a kidnapping. Well, you have to see it. It really grabbed my attention. Grabbed my attention a lot. That's 10 Cloverfield Lane. Millennials, you won't fall asleep during it, and uh, you just might enjoy it. So that was... Uh, that was it for uh, sports, entertainment. What do I have for you next? I got a few minutes left. I'm going to talk about uh, food, my favorite topic, and probably yours, you millennials. Um, let's take a look at the first slide. And we should have a... Oh, I'm sorry. This is a vent update. Vent update. Vent update. Vent update. I went to this restaurant two times. This is my third time I went, and I... And the man of the people for you, they clean the vent. They clean the vent at this restaurant. Hallelujah. It doesn't look as, as super clean, but it's a, not the cobweb, dirty mess that it was for four weeks running. Now, when I went in there, uh, I took a picture of it, and I noticed a lot of people, a lot of the um, employees were cleaning. And this is like 1130 and uh, when I took the picture of the vent again, I got a few head turns. 
I don't know if I caused it. I'm saying to myself that, yes, I did cause that to get cleaned. I'm still not going to divulge the uh, name of the restaurant. Good restaurant, lots of food to get, as much as you want to get, and now you have clean vents to get. Next, uh, what do we have next? The ch yeah, cheeseburger. Oh, this is called Charlie's. Charlie's is a restaurant located in Pennardville in the mobile gas station. They've been a lot of stuff. They've been Checkers, Subway, this, that, and the other thing. So this now is called Checkers, which is a, uh, they sell gyros, okay, uh, which was very interesting. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, not terrible, very juicy. I was impressed that he pulled the lamb out of a heater and he actually sliced it down. Very authentic. Will this station, will this restaurant last? Only time will tell. Uh, it's hard to have a successful takeout restaurant in a gas station setting. But this one, I think, might have a chance. Next slide, please. Okay. This was the uh, chicken tenders and fish that I got there, as well as the gyro. It was $10.99. And much to my surprise as I was eating it, can you give me the next slide, please, Kirsten? Oh, the fries were hidden underneath. Woo, I thought, I, I said, where are my french fries? Where are my french fries at? And there they were, hidden. An aluminum foil underneath on top with two pieces of haddock and uh, three pieces of chicken. Uh, were they as good as the back rooms? I think it's pretty close. Uh, you do get a lot in the back room, and I should have had a picture when I went to the back room restaurant for the show and for my stomach, and it made it, uh, it didn't, the time I realized I should have taken a picture of it at the back room, uh, when I brought it home, it was gone. So maybe that's, maybe I'm still about, I'm a, definitely a back room fan, but this place, Charlie's, good luck to you. I think you might be successful. Um, and I believe I went to a restaurant, a fast food restaurant, and took a temperature now, food should be at 135 degrees when you get it. 165 degrees is what it really should be cooked to. So I said, okay, let's go to this fast food restaurant. If Kirsten could run the video. Mr. Okay. G's Pop Culture going to do a temperature test at a nearby fast food restaurant. Okay, going up to place my order soon. I'm going to get a uh, double cheeseburger. No onions. The temperature should be at least... Uh, we'll give we'll give 135 degrees. It technically should be 165 when it comes off the grill, but, uh, but we're going to get it now. And then with our handy dandy thermometer, we'll be back and do a little investigation as uh, see what's up with the uh, fast food world today. G at Mr. G's Pop Culture. I just got a double cheese, no onion from a nearby fast food restaurant. It's been about 30 seconds since I've gotten it. I'm taking my internal thermometer. I'm sticking it into the thickest part of the cheeseburger. It should technically be. Right around 135, give or take that it is, uh, it's been about a minute and it's climbing. Look at that. We're at 124. We're at 125. Can you, I hope we're getting that beautiful. Look at that. It's still rising. Mr. G's Midlife Pop Culture Investigative Reporting. Your fast food restaurant here I think has done a superlative job getting my food to where it's supposed to be um, it's at about 130 right now and I'm gonna take that that's pretty that's pretty uh, pretty good uh, taking into consideration it was about two three minutes since I uh, bought it I'm pretty satisfied that this is uh, thoroughly cooked is it most healthiest thing for me A lot of people call it the devil's burger because it's really not good for you. Um, but it is safe at this particular restaurant at this particular time. So kudos to that fast food restaurant for actually cooking my food well. Um, you all don't usually walk around with an internal, move, internal food thermometer. But let me tell you, um, that food should come out hot. Just trying to protect you. So that, uh, that was a lot of fun. So finally, to wrap things up, the food... The Flex Glue Challenge from Episode 2. The uh, light fixture is still up and still holding. So there you go. Remember, Flex Glue, not so good right away. Takes time to cure unless you're doing it on a flat surface. And now I know you've all been on pins and needles waiting for the finals of the 2018 
Fidget Spinner Challenge. Place your bets, ladies and now gentlemen. It's time and for the finals of the 2018 Midlife Pop Culture Fidget Spinning Championship of the World. Our contestants are today Michelangelo and Ninja Spinner. Michelangelo spun first due to the coin flip, and Ninja Spinner is second. These two beat out in the semifinals Happy Face Spinner, and to the surprise and the dismay of a lot of people, Tie-Dye Spinner did not make the cut. But they're here rooting their prospective uh, favorites on. Right now, let me tell you that today's race is being brought to you by Fred's Ball Bearings. Yes, Fred's Ball Bearings. For all your fidget spinning needs, rated number one here at the Fidget Spinning Championship of the World. Let's take a moment, just look at the glory of these fidget spinners as they are spinning down the track. They're at the three-quarter pole now. And it looks like, to me, ball bearing and Michelangelo and fidget spinners looking very, very good. And here they come. And down the swirl they come. It's back and forth now. They're coming down close. It looks like a big surprise here as the favorite, Michelangelo, is losing momentum. But Fidget Spinner, Ninja Warrior, is doing just as good as a job trying to get going. This is the most exciting thing I have ever seen in my life. They are coming down close. Oh, and down the swirl they come again to the 100 meter yard. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. This is by far everything we expected and more. The fans are certainly getting their ticket prices today. The Fidget Spinner Championship. It's coming down to the wire now. Michelangelo, Ninja, Michelangelo, Ninja, Michelangelo, Ninja, Michelangelo, Ninja, Michelangelo, Ninja. Oh my goodness gracious. What is going to happen? It's coming right down to the final swirl. And your winner of the 2018 Fidget Spinning Championship is... Michelangelo, ladies and gentlemen. And here, Michelangelo, and he's gonna take his celebratory spin of champions as the other contestants come over to congratulate him. Well, what a day in Fidget Spinner history. What more needs to be said? Fidget spinners. I bought those at the uh, when um, the toy store, Toys R Us, went out of business, sadly. But I got those for a buck a piece. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Mr. G, Midlife Pop Culture Show. Have mindful thoughts. Try to be happy. If you can't, appreciate the fact that we're on this big planet we call Earth. Huh? We'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching. A show for those of us who were born a few years ago let's show those millennials all the things we know being old makes us wise sometimes we even go outside we know about life before 1999 you haven't seen nothing yet if you haven't lived life pre-internet listen up this is stuff you won't want to forget midlife pop culture